The allies of Russian President Vladimir Putin from the clan of a Chechen leader, Ramzan Kadyrov, are benefiting from the capture of a major steel plant in Mariupol, Ukraine, according to the Wall Street Journal. In 2022, the Illich Iron and Steel Works in Mariupol, one of Ukraine's largest steel producers, was damaged during the Russian full-scale invasion and the brutal siege of the city. However, it was not destroyed. Russian forces bombarded the plant, halting production, and it was eventually captured in April, along with the rest of Mariupol. The Wall Street Journal states that Kadyrov's group is removing and selling modern equipment from the plant, exporting scrap metal to Russia for use in its automotive industry, and selling industrial gases to the Russian space program. In March, Russian-backed authorities claimed that 130,000 tons of iron byproducts, potentially worth $16 million, had been exported over a six-month period. Metinvest, the plant's former Ukrainian owner, alleges that equipment valued at $220 million was dismantled and sent to Russia. Some of the plant's output has been exported to countries like Uzbekistan. This activity is seen as a reward for Kadyrov's loyalty to Putin, with the conquest of Ukrainian territory providing new opportunities for exploitation. Ramzan Kadyrov, the head of Russia's Chechen Republic, is a close ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin, maintaining a relationship marked by loyalty and mutual benefit. He is known for his personal militia, often called Kadyrovites, who actively supported Putin's military aggression in Ukraine. Kadyrov sent a trusted lieutenant, Vakit Geremiev, to seize the Ilyich works. Geremiev was quoted as saying, there were a lot of corpses. Everything was mined when describing the plant after its capture. A new company, LLC Illich MMK, was created to manage the plant's operations. Russian corporate records show that one of the company's founders is Geremiev's 25-year-old son, Valid Vakitovich Kotagin. Another Kadyrov associate, Alash Dadashov, has become a joint owner of the Illich steel plant and is involved in selling industrial gases from Mariupol with Russia's space agency Roscosmos among the customers. The takeover of economic resources by Putin's allies appears to be a well-organized looting enterprise, said Bodan Bernatsky, an investigator at Project Expedite Justice. The Wall Street Journal notes that the takeover mirrors practices used by the Wagner mercenary group in Africa, where military services were exchanged for control of natural resources. Earlier, Ukraine reported that Russian forces exported over 180,000 tons of stolen Ukrainian grain through the port of Mariupol, a city under Russian occupation since early 2022. Ukrainian officials have accused Russia of engaging in economic terrorism using stolen grain to finance military operations and sustain its aggression against Ukraine. In August, Russia opened a railway in occupied Mariupol, cutting its logistics route by 300 kilometers and significantly improving transportation efficiency for military and civilian supplies. This new route reduces reliance on the Kirsch Bridge and accelerates transport times, saving up to a week for key deliveries. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov called Monday reports of alleged North Korean troop deployment to Russia, contradictory information. South Koreans say one thing, the Pentagon says it has no confirmation of such statements, there is a lot of contradictory information, Peskov said during a conference call with reporters on Monday. Probably, it must be treated as such, he added. South Korea's spy agency said Friday it had confirmed that North Korea sent 1,500 special operation forces to Russia this month to support Moscow's special military operation in Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky earlier said his government had intelligence that 10,000 North Korea soldiers were being prepared to join Russian forces. North Korea, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea is our close neighbor, our partner and we are developing our relations in all fields. It is our sovereign right, Peskov stressed. Asked about former US President Donald Trump's comments in which he said that he once threatened to strike Moscow in a conversation with Russian President Vladimir Putin, 
Peskov responded that, we prefer to take a very responsible position of not making top-level conversations public. Regrettably, quite a few global leaders don't share this position and don't respect information hygiene. Let it stay on their conscience, Peskov said. Now, a lot of heated emotional statements could be heard in the United States during the election campaign, particularly in its final stages, he added. Корейская Народная Демократическая Республика является нашим близким соседом, нашим партнером, и мы развиваем наши отношения во всех областях. И это наше суверенное право. И это ни у кого не должно вызывать каких-то обеспокоенностей, потому что это сотрудничество не направлено против третьих стран. Мы будем развивать это сотрудничество и дальше. Мы видим много противоречивой информации. Южные корейцы заявляют одно, Пентагон заявляет, что они не имеют подтверждения таким высказываниям, поэтому много противоречивой информации, наверное, так к ней надо относиться. Мы по-прежнему предпочитаем заявлять очень ответственную позицию в плане непридания публичности содержания разговоров, которые ведутся на высшем уровне. К нашему сожалению, целый ряд мировых лидеров такой позиции не придерживаются и такую информационную гигиену в данном случае не соблюдают. Но это на их совести. Сейчас звучит очень много разных э, горячих и весьма эмоциональных заявлений в Соединенных Штатах в рамках избирательной кампании, особенно, особенно они.